Hello, fans. We're taking a brief moment to recognize and show our appreciation for the incredible support of our sponsors. Their commitment not only fuels our content, but also ensures we can bring you the very best of the airgun world. Firstly, a huge shout out to Southern Precision Air Weapons. Ken is a master of hard-hitting airgun tunes that deliver unrivaled accuracy. Moving on, we extend our gratitude to High Pressure Pneumatics. Be sure to check out what Tom has going on at his store in Michigan and online as well. Let's not forget the remarkable contribution of Donnie FL. Their innovations in suppressors have revolutionized the experience in the field, combining stealth with performance. A special thanks to GX Compressors as well for their robust and efficient compressors that are an absolute game changer in the pneumatic technology and convenience. Be sure to check out Scout Air Guns for the Epic and the all-new Evo. JSB and Predator International for the finest in air gun projectiles. Affordable, well-made, and fun air gun products from Umarex Air Guns. And lastly, we express our sincere appreciation for Sabre Tactical. Their tactical gear is not only about strength and durability, it's about taking your air gun experience to the next level. We proudly stand alongside these titans of the air gun industry and invite you, our valued listeners, to explore their outstanding offerings. Supporting our sponsors is directly supporting the air gun geeks, enabling us to continue delivering you the content you love and trust. Thank you for being the most essential part of our journey. Your engagement and support make all of this possible. Until next time, stay tuned and keep supporting those who make the Air Gun Geeks a reality. Hey, Bill, how you Patrick, doing? Patrick, what's Whoa. up? <laughs> Can you believe we actually had snow this morning here in California? Snow? Yeah, up in the higher altitudes in the Santa Cruz Mountains, we had snow today, um, oh. which I don't know. I, 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 since I've lived here, we've never had snow this late in the year um, in the time that I've been here. But, yeah, kind of weird. Uh, some uh, crazy, crazy weather. If this is global warming, uh, I want my money back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's rumors of a large cold front from Canada that's going to hit Florida this weekend. And, you know, as, uh, as much as I love our friends to the yeah. North, I, they can keep their weather. They I'm okay with that. Yeah. Over where Ken's at over at Spa weapons. Uh, this would be a Saturday uh, coming up. It's going to be 47 degrees at eight in the morning. Wow. So that's, a, that's a little twist because he's got a, he's got a 50 yard bench rest contest going on. That's going to change your gun. So that's going to be fun. Um, and then I just read, um, I just heard this morning, uh, that, uh, Manhattan had a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. So I yeah. think I would take snow over an earthquake any day, um, especially in those big skyscrapers, but hopefully everyone's good there. So yeah, lots of changing. So mm -hmm. eh, what are you going to do one day at a time? Right. Well, we got an eclipse coming up here. So, uh, maybe it's the, uh, heavens trying to, uh, to wake us up and, uh, maybe Get us to realize that as a country, we're not quite as divided as as our social media would lead us to believe. Yeah, that Monday, April 8th, 2024 is going to be a very interesting day. Mm. We'll see. Maybe we'll be having the podcast in another realm. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But uh, how, how's everything been with you? You've been doing well? I'll tell you, it has been um, it's been busy here at the uh, production center for uh, for Target Forge and the DIY Maker Films. Um, mm -hmm. That's for those that don't know, uh, the DIY Maker is my newest channel on YouTube, and I really wanted an outlet for things that I do that are not really airgun related. Because I've tried, I, I tried, I tried putting some non-air gun related content on my Target Forge channel, and it just it bombed. It it um, you know that audience expects air gun related stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I step out of my lane on that channel, uh, it's not not a very warm reception. Not that the people don't you know. I mean, a lot of the air gun community has been great and gives me gives me a lot of latitude, but. I'm not reaching the audience um, that I would otherwise like to with some of my broader interests like bushcraft and 
um, and things like that. And I do a lot of product reviews and stuff like that. I had a friend once tell me that um, he, he really liked my opinion of stuff. And I'm like, well, how can I, how can I make some money doing that? And turns out Amazon is willing to pay me to do that. So I try to bring a level of honesty and integrity to my reviews. And um, that channel uh, is very, very young, but it is growing at an incredible rate. I'm so delighted with that. And I did kick off some, um, some knife reviews. I tried a, an interesting form of a 60 second knife review. So I have 60 seconds to review a knife and, and tell my opinion. And it's, it's been an interesting experiment to try and get that done in 60 seconds. Uh, and it, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to keep that, that format or not. I have experimented a little bit with expanding that. And, uh, you know, I'll be perfectly honest. I, I use AI a lot to, um, to research topics, to understand things at a higher level. And I use AI also as a, uh, as a resource when I'm, when I'm spitballing or when I'm coming up with an idea for something. I will mm -hmm. articulate the idea to the AI. It'll reflect back, you know, its interpretation of what I said. And I'll say, no, 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 that's not what I meant. You know, change this, do that. And, you know, through that interaction of something that is really, really good at, at focusing on latching onto the details and articulating them back to me, it's a great way to explore an idea. So through that process, we've, uh, we've looked at, you know, doing some, a little different formula for the knife review. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to try some experiments with that going forward. But anyway, yeah, check out the, uh, if you want to check out the DIY maker channel on YouTube and um, on there, you'll find some uh, reviews of things that I think are interesting on Amazon. You'll also find, uh, I did some fun projects. One is making a fire starting paste. It's a gelled alcohol. Mm -hmm. Um of the highest quality, I think, of any of the videos that I've seen of making that stuff, I believe mine stands apart in the sense that it is very high purity and a very, very consistent material. Um, and I also did one on an alcohol stove using perlite and uh, waste sardine tin. So if you oh. want to see what you can do with some trash, um, do check out the DIY maker. There's some mm -hmm. fun projects going on over there. And, and that's going to be where I take, you know, those kind of harebrained ideas that pop in my head every now and then. Um, and I, and I explore those on that channel. I still have, uh, of course, the, uh, air gun geeks channel that I manage for Patrick and, mm -hmm. uh, I continue to grow that and, and, and go around the world harvesting content for that and, and bringing it to our air gun brothers. And I still have the Target Forge channel, which brings you everything you need to know about maintaining your GX compressor, about tricking out your guns, about doing things that, mm -hmm. uh, that you know, most people don't really want to do. It's so funny because I, I, I had a comment, Pat, on my, uh, my, no, my uh, Notos video, my second Notos video. Mm-hmm one that shows, um, you know, putting the plenum kit and everything in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and the guy was like, he was, you know, kind of like, Oh, well, must be nice to have $50,000 machine shop. I can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, well, first of all, this is an old used lathe that I've picked up really inexpensively. In fact, if Patrick didn't pay for half of it, I wouldn't have that lathe, you know, it, that's the reality. But, you know, I, I even gave the dimensions in that video of how you could do the same thing with a with a Dremel and get rid of those rings without without breaking the uh, the moderator. But you know, another one of my viewers finally came to my rescue and and left a a remark that uh, kind of put that guy in his place. And I'm like, well, thank you, thank you for jumping in the comments. And I don't think people realize about how important the chatter in the comments yes. is to your YouTube presence. And it is, I mean, if you just take, if you just take 20 seconds out of your extremely busy day and go leave some comments on videos that you think are important mm -hmm. or that you value, that is a great way to support your local YouTuber. And, and it, it, 
it tickles the jimmies of the of the algorithm in a way that makes it respond. And uh, I know that's an overtly sexual interpretation of uh, antagonizing the AI that is responsible for YouTube, but honestly, it works. It is a great way to stimulate that um, that beast and get get a response from it. Yeah. And that that's what we need because we do we do fight every day. We fight for our our market share, and um, and we have to. It's it's an uphill battle, and I'll tell you, Pat. I have also been increasing my presence on X. Um, I am a big proponent of what Elon is building over there, and people who think that it's just Twitter, it's not. What Elon has said himself that he is building is a whole new social media platform that is free from the censorship and the BS that we see on everything Zuckerberg Zuckerberg owns Instagram and Facebook and also the the crap that we put up with on YouTube of you know sequestering us because they don't believe yeah. our video content is advertiser friendly which is just a clever dodge for we want to we want to throw some shade on you um you know I I have been I've been working on on creating another persona of me over on X as well to kind of have a foot over there so that, you know, as I don't know if, if you guys remember, but there was a time when YouTube just went and shut down a bunch of air gun related channels. They just flipped the switch, like click, you guys are gone. Sorry. Um, and that sent just shock waves through this industry. Like, how in the hell can you just go and do that? The problem is they can. They do yeah. have that power. Um, and I think right now the battle we're fighting is that kind of quiet death that they're trying to just mm -hmm. hope hope that we bleed out. Um, so yeah, I, I've been um I've been re reinvigorated in building my ex um presence over there and i've been posting videos over there i've been posting content over there um to try and start building that so that i have a, a life raft if you will i mean mm -hmm. another place that i can go to take my take my game somewhere else and who knows maybe we'll start featuring episodes of the uh, air gun geeks podcast over on x when i become a uh, a premium member and i can get long long format content over there mm-hmm yeah, Elon's been clear that he wants that to be, he wants to be the the safe place for um, social media to be done in a way that's not censored, that is, um, you know, free from the tyranny of impressing your ideas on someone else. Which, yeah, that's what we that's what we fight. Now, Pat, you've been you've been up to like all manners of calamity. You've had some some more health issues come your way and you've, you've gotten a, you've gotten the leg up in that battle. Yep. And, and you have, uh, you've got some, uh, very interesting things going on with your, uh, iguana control business as well. So shed some light on that for us. Well, um, yeah, there was a little bit of, a some complications from body surgery. Um, but we got that all resolved because they got really good doctors down at the uh, Miami VA. So definite props to them. Mm -hmm. Um, and now it's getting warm down here and Bob and Helen mm. have got the army together and they are everywhere. So I have gotten so many requests, Bill. Oh my God. Hey, we want to go on a boat. We want to shoot these things off a boat. I'm like, okay. So I looked into that. So now I'm getting the captain's license. So right hey. now. Let me tell you, Pat, when you get your captain's license, if the iguana thing doesn't work out for you, I hear there's an opening in Baltimore. No, that's bridging that's 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 bridging the gap kind oh, of now. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I saw where you were going with that. I went yeah, on the other they, side. They, they need a, they need a captain up there that's used to power failures on boats. And I hear you've been wrestling with that. Did you ever get that fixed? Yeah, so. So I don't know what to call the boat yet, but we're going to call her her. She is in the shop getting fixed and a couple of components were bad. So they say it should be up and running by next week. I hope. So I was like, uh, we need to get out and go shoot some iguanas. But uh, 
it's always something. I always say if if you're not struggling, the, the devil ain't messing with you. It means you're going in the right direction, in other words. Um, so got that going. Um, playing around with uh, a new gun. I ended up getting a uh, raw micro in 22. Mm -hmm. Interesting neat little gun, neat little gun. I don't like the left handed side because you know I'm I shoot left handed and then I got to take my hand off and so got to get some right handed feeding magazines. Um, so playing with that, um, totally forgot Bill that I own a day state red wolf. Mm. I was doing inventory and I'm like, what's this? What's this box? I'm like, oh, that's right, I did buy a midnight blue. I'm not blue. buying that you forgot you had a four thousand dollar air gun pad. I'm, yeah, I'm not buying. yeah. So, but that will be uh, that will be debuted uh, at RMAC this year. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, so will the Black Mamba, which is uh, my speed shooting Leshy, and uh, I'm I'm working on the mental side, Bill. We we won't. Uh, we won't flip the can like we did last year. Uh, that was, I still, I, I was a little upset with myself, but I was excited I made it to the finals because initially I didn't even get in and then people didn't show up and they're like, okay, you can go if you want to do it. And then I beat all these people to get into the finals. I was excited with that, um, but I did break the one rule. I, I had fun, but I, I came in last. Um so. You didn't come in last though. You absolutely didn't. You placed pretty well. Um, and I, you know, I, I kept, I, I saw it happening. I, 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 you know, I was, I was lucky that I could sit off to the side and watch Patrick yeah. step in front of that freight train. And I kept, I kept trying to tell you, Pat, don't get in your own head. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't let John Bagakis get inside your head just be you just relax mm -hmm. and enjoy this and that's not what happened pat got no i became a bartender i was got, shaking pat like got crazy really <laughs> excited and he got really in the moment and that's great uh, and then you had that experience yeah. but now you know what now i was I talking about and how to how to separate yourself from that that competition persona and and still be able to perform and that's you know, honestly, that's that's why I when we go to these events, Pat, mm -hmm. I I like to be the guy that's capturing the story around the mm -hmm. side. I, and I'm you know, I don't I don't need to compete. And, and if I'm going to compete, then that's all I'm going to do, because I have to be completely focused on that. <laughs> it's a character yeah. flaw for me. And I, I, I won't be, I won't be good at interviewing people if I'm in competition mode. So mm -hmm. I elect to go to these events and, and just work the outside and capture the stories. And that's why I love, I love going to these events and, and getting those stories and talking to the manufacturers and stuff. And, and, you know, we, we've got something very special coming up at the end of yeah, this cool. podcast that you're going to want to stick around for. And that is the ballastol drawing happens this episode. Pat's got some, he is, uh, he's got some fantastic G whiz tools that he's going to pull out and he's going to select our five winners. Six, and we have six, six winners, winners. Six, six winners, winners. six winners. Yes. And, and we are, you know, Pat was going to discount one of our people because they were not from the continental United States. And I said, you know what? Yeah, we're like, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't abide by that. I'm going to pay for the shipping, um, for the, for the guy. If he wins from Australia, I will pay for his ballastol stuff to get there. And if, if ballastol has to ship it to me and then, then I have to ship it to him, that that's okay. But I, I didn't want to, he, if you read his entry, mm -hmm. he was so passionate about getting into this contest. I'm like, I can't, I can't just dispense this guy. So, uh, yeah, that he's going to be in the running. So everybody who entered is going to be in it and, uh, and stick around to the end for that. And Pat, do you know who we're talking to, uh, in this interview on this episode? Oh, yes, I do. One, it's the, um, main engineer and the son of Frederick Axelson, Johan Axelson. And of the, of the mighty FX air of, guns of, yeah. world. FX right there. The yeah, FX there air go. gun. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very yep. Nice. I had to wear the shirt. You're repping. Uh, You're repping yeah. hard. I'm trying. I'm trying. 
Um, and I'm, I'm really excited for everyone to see this interview. I think it was one of the best interviews, one of them, that you got from Iowa. And it was just so casual and laid back. And he was so proud. And I personally can't wait to get my hands on a DRS. I'm, uh, I'm excited you know, I'm to get one myself. I'm an FX addict. But, but. That Manelli Wood stock is 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 nothing but the cat's meow. I the I'm I'm, is, I'm holding out. I really want I want my DRS to have the carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. uh, with y'all second emotion over barrel. I would probably prefer to have 600 millimeters in 22, mm -hmm. but I, yeah, that's probably what I would get. I'd probably get the that gun in a 22 with a carbon fiber barrel just to get a little bit more capacity out of it. Mm. And, and really, if you want some fun, entertaining viewing, do jump on YouTube and check out the links we've got below in the description for some of the video content around the DRS. It is a, it is, it's not something that hasn't been done before with air guns, but no. it is, it is given the FX touch in that it's been very well implemented and uh, and I'm excited for what this is going to do, and um, I'm excited to see somebody give the uh, the Red Panda a run this year uh, on the bench yeah. rest circuit. That's going to be very telling to watch unfold this year. Um, so, Pat, are you ready to uh, to get to our interview? I am ready and excited. All right. Well, let's roll that footage right about now. Airgun Geeks, I've got a unique opportunity here to get a talk with the man, the guy behind FX Airgun Extravaganza here at IWA 2024. I am so honored to have a minute to talk with you, Johan. Thank you for taking some time out of your exceptionally busy schedule here at IWA. And uh, welcome to the Airgun Geeks podcast. Yeah. Tell us what you've got to show us here. Thank you. Um, no, I'm here today with the new FX DRS. Uh, it's a new air gun that we have that we are utilizing the air around the barrel. Mm -hmm. It allows us to make a very, very lightweight, very, very high quality air rifle uh, for a good value. Uh, it gives the end user a very, very sleek profile. It gives the user a lot of different options. We have everything from a super lightweight synthetic stock to a gorgeous looking Minelli Walnut to a competition MDT stock. So it's a rifle you can bring out to your guard and shoot your kids shooting low, lightweight pallets. But you can take it all the way to competition, PRS-2-2 shooting, really pushing the limits of what arrogance can do. So it's a jack-of-all-trades. Uh, and with this, the good thing with this jack-of-all-trades rifle is that so much things are dynamic. So the plenum, usually when we try to get everything in one gun, it's very hard because... Sure. You got, then have the same planning for every single rifle. You have the same valve. It's, you get uh, master of none. But with this one, due to the fact we have adjustable length of the barrels, we have a different planums available. So when we set it up for garden shooting, everything, we have a super small planum, mm -hmm. which makes it perfect. It's very uh, stable, a very consistent air rifle for 16 grain pellets. Uh, but if you then want to go be able to do uh, high power shooting, long range shooting, you can just change the plenum, <laughs> and if you're going to really long range shooting, you can change the barreling, and you're able to push this to almost rim fire uh, two to power levels and get the same uh, BCs and get but better consistency than a standard long rifle. So I assume the same uh, technical wizardry of the FX barrel exists on the inside of there. Yes. So you're still doing the imprinted rifling. Yeah. On the barrel, and you're you you're surrounding that with the air reservoir. Correct. And can you tell us what is the effective volume of this air reservoir in in this length? In this length, it's 208 cc's of air, uh, so it's still quite a bit. You're able to get up to 60 shots per fill mm -hmm. with the 15.8 grains at about 900 feet per second. Oh wow! Uh, and we have a carbon fiber upgrade for this one as well, so. With an upgrade, you get about 30% more shots per fill. So the pressure vessel, uh, the skin, becomes yeah. carbon fiber? Exactly, which enables a slightly more volume, but also a higher fill pressure. So you're able to go higher in, in the air pressure in the rifle. 
Now, uh, the, the engineer in me wants to know, yep. is that uh, carbon fiber lined with metal or is it just pure carbon fiber? No, it's uh, aluminum core right. lined with uh, yeah. carbon fiber. Very and good. it's the first trial test we've done. I think the burst pressure is almost 1,000 bars. Oh, oh, wow. That's going a lot. Yeah, so, yeah, so we have four times the safety margin, so what the end user is going to be able to use it at. So what is the max fill pressure in the aluminum? Uh, the, the aluminum is the same tube we've, all, we've been using for the Wildcat and Dreamline. So it's 230 bars, well tested, it, but it's a, it's a super lightweight, a super good aluminum tube. So I'm very happy with that. Sure. Yeah. But due to the fact when we're pushing 38, 40 grain slugs in two, two up to what, 1000 feet per second, we want to be able to make certain that there's enough shots per fill to finish the stage. When you go down to third grade, no problem whatsoever. Yeah. But we want to be able to, if you if you go to a competition, it is super windy. The long rifle, rifles will have a advantage over you if you shoot third grades. But by able, being able to push the, pushing the 34, 36, or 38, 40 grades up to that speed, we will be, be able to limit their uh, <clears throat> the advantage they have. Do you know what's so exciting to me about what you just said is that as an air gun manufacturer, you're looking at the real use case. Yeah. And you're trying to understand what is it what does it take to compete with this gun? Yeah. And let's make it capable of doing that. And yeah. that to me speaks volumes because so many times um, you know, we'll go to get a scope to use with field target. Yeah. And it's not marked at 12 power, and it's not marked at 16 power. I'm yeah, like, I, that that is that you shot me in the foot. I can't yes. I can't use this product because you didn't do your homework. Right. right. And the firearms guys couldn't care less. Yeah. Whether they had an armor marking at 16 or 14. Yeah. Care. No. So you know, I love the fact that it, you guys are actually looking at that and not throwing a gun to us and saying, "Well, make do." Yeah. Exactly. No, and that's. That's the main thing behind this. Like this project started when MDT contacted me and wanted to make a chassis for one of my air rifles. And I simply told them, I don't have any air rifles I want to put in your chassis. So, but I told them I would like to make a new one. So that's when we started design on this. Oh, wow. So that's how it all started. I, I have always been very passionate about guns that look like traditional rifles. Yeah. And, you know, one of the first FXs that I owned was a uh, uh, Crown Mark yeah. One. And the reason I owned that gun, because I was, I was at the point where I was ready to purchase, and I really wanted a Red Walker. Yeah. That, that's the gun I wanted. I went to SHOT Show in 2017, and I saw the debut of the Crown. Ah, yeah. And that wood just absolutely sold it to me. Yeah. Like, no, that, that's what I'm buying. And it's that... Uh, it's that classic style, classic lines. But had this been there, yeah, I would have had an even harder time because when you get rid of the of the bottle, yeah, and you know some guys call it the plumbing show, you know, where there's a lot of a lot of guns that favor the external plumbing and yeah. and everything. This really resonates, and I will also say this will work with almost all of the firearm and gun storage, like yeah. scabbards and things like that. Uh, that most air guns won't fit in because of the big bulbous tank. Yeah, definitely. This will fit in those solutions. So no, it's really uh, exciting. And that was one of the the feelings that we want. We want to have a rifle to get more firearm shooters into the air gun industry. I think there's a lot of benefits with the bottle because the bottle is the bottle is one of the most expensive parts of the air rifle. Sure. But you're able to get 480 cc, 250 bar in such a light container. So it's amazing for air rifles, but it has a very, very high profile and such things, which I don't really mind because I shoot a lot from the bench. Yeah. But seeing the last few years when we've been shooting more and more PRS into you two and more dynamic shooting, I've got in love with that even more. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to have something low profile and trying to get rid of as many drawbacks as possible. So this will also be a gateway drugs to get people into the agon industry, <laughs> to get more people involved. You know, there's nothing really wrong with the uh, with the crack dealers you know, model. It, it it is effective. You get somebody addicted to air guns and then you know they're a customer for life. I know, uh, you know, I I was talking to your father at the opening of Utah Air Guns, yep. the grand opening for that, and I said, you know, uh, my crown that I bought from you is the most anything, the most accurate anything I own. 
doesn't matter. Firearm, yeah. air gun, doesn't matter. It's the most accurate thing that I own. One of the best things what I think about air rifles is like when I get new people into the sport, a new friend, friends that shoot firearms and they go to the range and when the center fires and they shoot, I can have a good day at the range. They shoot maybe hundred shots, but, and that's a lot of shots for a center fire day. But when you go with an air rifle, hundred shots is so like the amount of trigger time you're able to get from an air gun is insane compared to any other thing in the world. So I think air guns is a very good way to just get shooting because it's yeah. so easy and so fun. It's, it doesn't disturb. And we actually just explored this in our first episode of 2024. We talked about the synergy between the firearms world and the air gun world. And what the air gun allows you to do, like you just touched on, is practice at home. Yeah. You've got that opportunity. Yeah. You can, you can set up a little 30 yard range yeah. at home. Yeah. And make it challenging by making the target really small. Yeah, they're definitely. You're doing the same practice. You're, you're doing the, it's long range shooting, but scale down. Yeah. So you're having like, you're having the same problems you have at longer ranges, at shorter ranges. Yep. Uh, so it's, it just enables you to do a lot more things. Yeah. Same like in Sweden, for example, we sent the uh, PRS is quite big. It's getting more and more popular. Really? But the amount of ranges you're able to shoot uh, NRL and PRS with scent fires are very, very limited. So there's about four or five competitions a year. They're big, but it's very hard to get to them. And Sweden is a very, it's a small country, but it's very long. So if you live in the wrong part, you have to drive six, seven, eight hours to the closest match. And it's only four or five of them. With 2-2 two, two air rifles, or mainly 2-2 two, two long rifles right now in Sweden, you're able to go in and have a match wherever pretty much, because you only have to have 200 meters to make, make it com com compatible. So it's, it's starting to grow a lot in Sweden, and that's why we want to attack as well. Very nice. I have one more question about the barrel itself. Yeah. Um, how does the variation in air pressure affect the harmonics of the barrel as that pressure degrades? Um, so the main thing and the, the most about issues with this is you have to have an air canister that is completely straight and you have to have the start and the end have to be completely straight cut. Uh, and on top of that, we have a free floating barrel inside. So if the air tube were to move slightly, the barrel still sits in the same position. Okay. So there's some leeway in the barrel. So, so you're not seeing any impact on barrel harmonics. No, no, no. The pressure variation. No, no, not at all. Actually, it's been very, very rigid. And um, <clears throat> the drawbacks you get from it, you get, like you get back because when you shoot the rifle, the, the harmonics of the barrel during the shots is so so reduced due to the fact that it's air around it so i haven't seen any poi shifts or anything like that very nice so my most obvious question is is it matt dubber approved yeah yeah definitely no <laughs> matt is the, actually the main guy that tested the rifle and the, like he's super stoked about it he still only have the prototype so we're sending him off to the show now he'll have the first production rifle uh in the mdt chassis that anyone has in the world so uh, okay. yeah so exciting no well thank you for sharing the uh that amazing piece of technology with us i love the fact that you've made the magazine well yeah deeper yeah because that was one thing that i always struggled with my mark ii impact i always wanted to use the uh 40 grains the, the longer yeah caliber slugs yeah not slugs but uh uh pellets yeah predators yeah and I could never, I could never fit them in the mag. So no. bravo for, uh, for fixing that too. Of course. Yeah. But well, is there uh, anything else that you'd like to say to our viewers about FX for the future and FX as it, as it uh, moves forward in time? Uh, like FX will always be FX. Like this used to be a work for me and my father, but now it's a hobby and we do, we do it because we love it. And we've done that for a long time and yeah, we just love the, everything about it and we love the industry and it, it's very fun to continue pushing the limit of what arrogance can do and continue pushing the, what, what we're able to do ourselves. Yeah, well, I, I have to say of, of the designs that I've seen come out in the last couple of years, this is definitely about as innovative as it gets. Thank you. I, uh, I will look forward to shooting my knees. Um, I might have to sell one of my crowns though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're all hitting the streets. I, I know the last shipment arrived in the USA with the synthetic version last week. So they're about to hit the, your closest dealer any day now. 
Very good. You've got some new relationships in the U.S. Utah Air Gun yeah. has stepped up and yeah, uh, definitely and become your U.S. distributor, which is to me fantastic news because I, you know, Justin is a, is a really outstanding man. Yeah, Justin and Austin and Thai team is amazing guys, and yes. I'm very happy to work with them, and they're able to bring us closer to the market, to the end users, and to the everything such as problems that we need to address things that they see that end users want in the future and we're able to yeah really really go after what is needed excellent i think that is such a big step forward for fx to to be working with a team like that uh it's it's good to see yeah thank you yeah thank you well uh is there anything you want to say to our uh, to our viewers that is not air gun related just advice you want to pass on or something that you're passionate about <laughs> Putting me on the spot there, but... I always do. Yeah. That's what I'm famous for. No, but... <laughs> Sorry. Just go out and enjoy it. Like, yeah. just enjoy yourself. That's what you're supposed to do. Shoot what you think is fun. And just... Yeah. Be able to utilize the product that you buy and uh, have a fu fun time with it. Yeah. So, basically, your message is just have fun. Yeah, always. Yeah. That's what life's about. Life's too short for anything else. That's good advice. That's good advice. Thank you, Johan. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, and we're going to be delighted to hear this uh, in a podcast coming up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you for coming by. Well, Pat, what did you think of my of my talk with wow. Johan? Well, first off, there was that Manelli stock. I was mm -hmm. eyeballing that. Um, I, I, you know, I really like how you were in the corner. You were like in your own little cubicle there and just having a nice casual conversation. And just the way Johan talked about that gun, he, it, it's, I mean, that's his new star child. I mean, he absolutely loves that thing. And it's so simplistic. And the good thing is, is if you owned a, a Dreamline, a Wildcat, uh, a Crown, they fit those magazines, the big magazines. But it also comes with that mini mag. And what's really cool, and I don't know if you caught this, they actually have a ball bearing in them now, a roller bearing. Hmm. So I saw another manufacturer, um, Stud does that, has a bearing in it. And the fact that uh, Sideshot did that, I thought that was a big upgrade in magazines. Period, from from Sideshot, um, that was that was pretty cool. But just the whole layout, I can't wait to get my hands on one because I, I think I read on the specs that the compact 500 millimeter is only like 4.9 pounds with the classic wow. synthetic stock. I'm like, <laughs> that's it, and then you put uh, like a prism scope that I have on there. You're what? 5.2, 5.3, maybe five and a half pounds. And, you know, it, you throw a moderator on there and off you go, you know. And but, I, I think it's hysterical that you and I are so very different mm -hmm. in, in our requirements for, for air gun weight. I, I don't mind if it's 10, 11 pounds. That doesn't bother me at all because I'm not, I'm not usually lugging the thing around. I'm, I'm going to go set up on a bench or, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do some shooting out in the desert or whatever it is, but I'm not, I'm not hiking around with the thing. I'm not walking and stalking like you are chasing uh, Bob and Helen around. Yeah. Uh, but what's well, the yeah. infamous question we always ask Bill, what's your purpose? Fair point. Fair point. So what's your purpose? What are you doing? I'm doing something totally different. So I'm with you do for the bench. I would want the 700 mil in the MDT chassis and just weight that thing down so it doesn't move. But I don't want to go carrying that around. You know, like, what is it? The uh, the Red Panda is 17 pounds right off the bat. And then you add a three-pound scope and a, a pound and a half bipod and your cheek, you know, however much that is. But to be fair, that is designed as a bench rest as gun. As a bench gun, it's yes. Designed as a gun that's already ready to go for that for that sport. So, yeah. you know, it, it is, it is a different world. It's a different requirement. It's a different purpose as purpose. you alluded. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that is right. And, you know, it, it's always, you know, when the wife asks, well, why do you need so many guns? Um, they're tools and each tool is unique to its application. Correct. You know, I'm not going to go take my 45 caliber um, H H and K pistol and go 
skeet shooting with it. It's not, it's not going to work very well. There's a tool for each job. And the same is true of air guns. Um, you know, we've got, we've got all kinds of camps around the, uh, around the air gun arena. And we all need to just come together and realize that, Hey, you know what? We're all here to have fun. And whether somebody brought an FX gun or whether somebody brought a day state or whether somebody brought, uh, a, an Uber X that was made yeah. by some other company for gosh sakes, just have fun and enjoy yourself Correct. and get out of your own head. Um, yeah. Yeah. Get outside and shoot some lead. <laughs> That's right. Fly some pellets, right? You got it. You got it. That's what it comes down to. And, and well, buy what you can afford that, yeah, you know, absolutely. you don't, you don't need an FX there. There there's, um, what was one of the new guns that we saw was, it, look, I thought it was a, a Crossman 362, and it wasn't. It's um, I forget what they call it. Oh, shame on me. But it's a PCP version. Hmm. Rick Rem did a video on it. I'm like, what is that? And it's only a couple hundred bucks. Wow. And Rick shooting stuff. Now I know Rick's Rick's a special person with shooting lead, but for a couple hundred bucks, you're out in the backyard having some fun. So there's, there's something for everyone, which is a big difference from 16 years ago when I started air gunning and going, Oh my God, how am I going to get all this stuff? You know? So I agree. I agree. Well, we've got a ballast all giveaway to get to Pat. So uh, we do. why don't you, why don't you unleash that demon and uh, we'll reconfigure the screen here. I'm going to find the list of people. Here we go. So, Bill. Yes. How many people do you think are in this drawing? Um, 2.7 million. They need they need to start subscribing to the YouTube channel <laughs> right now. Call to action. <laughs> we <laughs> you got me going. We have 14 people. That's so awesome. I I am I am I delighted know. that um that we've got 14 people that care enough about Ballastol in their lives to to have responded to our call to action and are in the game for this. I that makes me delighted. Agree, agree. So how this is going to work everyone is we're going to pull up a number generator and as you emailed us you got put on the list. So if you were the first one to email, then you're number 1. All you're the way number up one. To you're number so one. Can... You're number one. All right. So I'm going to get to the fancy little thing here. All right. Here we go. Oh. All right. So we're going to start. This. Look at all this technology. Look at all this and all these ads. Yes. All right. So here we go. Number seven is the what was going to <laughs> that's so built. I'm cracking up here. Uh, All right, who's, who's our first winner, Pat? So, the first winner is Jeff Higgins Bergen. Hopefully, I said that right out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Congratulations, Very good. Jeff. Very good. All right, first Let's one goes to a flatlander. Now, this is number 11 is Rob McCory. So, Rob, I'm going to email you, but if you're listening, uh, I need you to send me your address so that we can send you your ballast stall. Um, but congratulations, Rob. Excellent. All right. I'm really liking this wheel. <laughs> it's a wheel that can bring up its mind, Bill. Number 12. 
Oh, wow. This is, um, hopefully I'm saying his name right. It's Tail Peterson out of Delta, Utah. Excellent. Congratulations. Is it number three? What is it going to be? Number three. Congratulations, James Seiler out of Collins, Wisconsin. He must be the other Wisconsin air gunner. Uh, <laughs> no point in saying it, Joe. <laughs> oh. All right, so we're working on the fifth one. Ooh. Number one, that's Patrick Parker out of Germantown, Tennessee. All right. Congratulations, that's Patrick. Well, thank you, Bill. No, <laughs> wrong, Patrick. This is number six. Who will be the final winner? Did you spin that thing extra hard, Pat? Really hard. It sounds like a Geiger counter. I'm just saying. And do number one again, sir. My gosh, it doesn't want to give up. Turn it again. I think I'm going to go out on the limb here and suggest we find a new picker when we do another another contest. Hundred percent positive. Yes. I think it's stuck. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, but it picked number seven already, my friend. This is interesting. I think what it's waiting for is it's really wanting Australia. I think I think that's what's going on. I think Jeff is signaling to our device here that he really mm -hmm. wants. I'm feeling it for him. Number nine is Travis Lloyd out of Mapleton, Iowa. Congratulations, Travis. Very good. Another Flatlander. Another flatlander. All right. Well, that was exciting. It was indeed. Yeah, we definitely have to get a new thing. I don't know. That thing was working great in our trial run, Bill, and then all of a sudden it just went to pot. But what will happen is you will get a shipment directly from Ballastall. So watch for that in the mail. I will email them today to get those out to you ASAP. And it's going to be a cool little kit. And then, of course, let us know how you like the ballast stall and what you've been using it for. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to hear. And uh, and when you're doing that, you can also vote for your favorite host or favorite entity here at the Airgun Geeks podcast. You can vote for Patrick. 
as you can see on the screen, we've got airgunsplusspatrick at gmail.com. Or you can vote for Bill at airgunsplusbill at gmail.com. Or you can vote for the lovely Bonnie. And for hers, just put in uh, vote for Bonnie in the subject and, and just write to airgungeeks at gmail.com. And she will get you a sticker in the mail and um, and count your vote. But uh, yeah, we uh, we've had so much fun with this with this contest that we continued it in 2024, and uh, and it has been a real hoot. But hey, if you got if you've got uh, some things that you'd like to give away on the Airgun Geeks, or you've got a product that you want to come on and promote on the Airgun Geeks podcast, do reach out to us and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, just email us at Airgun Geeks and let us know. Yep. Also, want to give a friendly reminder to go on Facebook and join the Airgun Geeks Facebook page. Uh, please answer three questions. It's how I keep the uh, bots out and us real people in there. Um, and if you're listening on Apple Podcast, make sure you give us five stars and leave a review. And all of those that have done that, uh, we do appreciate that. It really helps with the algorithm with Apple. And it gives us a good rating and puts us near the top. Um, also, reminder, um, we do have the competitions coming up. Uh, you have the Northeast Air Gun Classic that is still going on. Um, that's coming up on the, I think it's the 14th of this month of April. So make sure you go check that out. And then, of course, RMAC registration is open. And there are some spots that are open. Hopefully, they'll uh, be filled up fairly quickly. Um, but even if you're not competing, come on down. you got to experience RMAC. Uh, there's a vendor's day and all that stuff. Plus, you get to come to the shop, meet people from all over the world. Uh, you get to meet us. We are mm -hmm. signing autographs. <laughs> now if you want if you want an autograph you can have it but now it'd be good to meet everyone in person and uh it it's a it's a good time there there's so much that i think bill we need a vacation after we do that so well i nice. think after, after all the travel you put me through this winter pat i you know i i don't know you're pretty stingy with the vacations <sighs> well we gotta work hard it's a yeah. rough year right you're right <laughs> Yeah. All right. Did you have anything else that you wanted to get out to the air gun geeks? Just continue to, to heal this country, to heal the division and mm -hmm. by all means be a light in the darkness and go fly some pellets. And like always stay geeky.